Hey, I'm talking authentic, but it's not hard. It's easy and ooh, it is so tasty. Cheese enchiladas, I'm talking traditional, but guess what? We have got a red sauce that is gonna make the best thing you've ever seen. Made out of traditional chilies that give it so much of a great flavor. Look out, I am fixing to split me some wood and get the fire started. I ain't gonna wait on you, come on. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a beautiful day it is, and hmm, that one caught me in a very hungry mood. And what are we gonna talk about? Authentic cheese enchiladas. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the good stuff. I can remember after we was guiding elk hunters back in the 80s, pulling down a long alley there, went inside there, and let me tell you folks, it was the best cheese enchiladas I ever eaten in my life. But authentic chilies, that's what we're talking about. Getting some of them good dried chilies to make that rojo red sauce that is oh so good. But we're gonna use a cheese and an onion base. That's what's usually in them typically and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick to the roots, so let's get after it. I'm gonna get you a stock pot and I'm gonna fill it up with about that much water. And I want you to go to the store. Hurry, run fast before the water boils over, okay? I want you to find 12 Guajillo chilies. Yeah, whew, them things are long and red and skinny about like this. And I like them that are good and dried, not soft, because we're gonna rehydrate them and get the most flavor out of them. I usually just pop the stems off of them. Then I'm gonna go to my old standbys, the ones that I love so much that bring sort of a smoky, fruity taste to all this, and that is that ancho chili. Whew, I love them things. They're a little bigger round, sort of black when they're dried up. Throw them in there, two of them. Mm, they are some good. And I used to like to really use cascabel chilies for the rest of this. Now, I got to where I can't hardly find them, but they got a little more spice to them, just a little heat, but it's gentle. And ooh, they so tasty. But they didn't have them, uh -uh. so I went with some good New Mexico chilies, which are probably some good dried hatch chilies is what they are, some of their red ones. And then after that, and this is optional to you folks that might not want a little heat in your kitchen, I'm gonna use two chili they are ball in this recipe. And we got them all in there, just gonna let them boil for about 10 or 12 minutes till they get really good and tender. Then get that thing you've seen me have a lot of trouble with that sometimes lights up like a Christmas tree, that automatic pool rope starting blender, and let's put all them in there. That broth that was in there, and let's start with about a half a cup. Pour it in that blender, four garlic cloves. Put the lid on, snap her down tight. Hit the button, folks, we are going to the moon, we are, and let her go. Look at it, way too thick it is, ain't it? So. Dip in there and let's get us about another half to three-fourths of a cup and pour that in there. Stir it up really good with that blender, let it go. Then, folks, I want you to take you and get you one of them strainers that's got pretty small holes in it. I don't want no great big one because we're gonna strain them seeds and whatever stem might have been left on there if there was. Now, we're gonna add some more liquid to this as we go along, but folks, that broth is sort of like magic juice. It'll get folks to tell the truth, I'm telling you. You can save that stuff, put it in your stews, put it in with an old pot roast. It don't take much, but oh, you're gonna blend some flavor there so good, and you'll be saying to yourself, that a boy cowboy can't for giving me that tip, cause that stuff is pretty good. But to start this off, we're gonna keep it authentic, you know what I mean? We're gonna go over to the stove, and we're gonna toast us some stuff. Well, here we are at Old Bertha. Now, if you was to be thinking about good rojo enchilada sauce, I mean good thick red sauce, would you be thinking to yourself that it has something in common with McDonald's drive through window? Maybe, I don't know. What could it be, Cowboy Kent? A sesame seed bun. That's oh. sort of where we're going here, Shan. You were sort of lost for a minute. That at all. Hey, until I seen this woman putting this stuff in there, I never knew it existed neither. I didn't know that you needed some sesame seed to get this good authentic taste, but folks, don't leave it out. You can find it at the grocery store, tablespoonful in a hot cast iron skillet and we're just gonna toast it. And you need to be stirring it around on occasion cause I don't want it burnt, I just want it browned a little. Now, we're gonna go ahead, when that gets toasted a little, and we're gonna put in some whole oregano and some whole cumin. Because when you do that, folks, you're gonna get the most flavor out of it. I don't even like the cumin powder, I like to use that. But we first, we gotta toast this a little longer because it don't take that other near as long. And you're not gonna see it turn like a golden brown like you'd be doing some toast. It's just gonna brown slightly. But you keep an eye on it. Don't be burning them sesame seeds. I'll tell Ronald McDonald. 
they're browning up just a little they are and i'm gonna reach down here in my pocket this is what i was talking about whole oregano now i want shan to zoom in here so i want you to see this stuff see how it's different and folks we're gonna toast this just a little so we get more flavor out of it it's pretty light in the breeze see what i'm talking about it'll go somewhere today so we're gonna put about that much in there and i think i got something else in this other pocket called what look here whole cumin did y'all know it come that way? We're gonna get us some of that. But when you toast stuff like this or any spice that you're using, you're gonna get more flavor out of it. Don't forget this step, it is very important. Y'all ever seen one of them? I ain't making medicine, but folks, we making something just as good. If you can't find you one of these, I think they might be having some of them on Amazon. My good friend Larry that helps us over at Wellington, I told him, Larry, you got one of them? And he called it by name. I don't know what it was. I told him I need a mortar and a pedestal. He said, we don't have one of them, but we got this. He said, their family just called it the grinding rock. So that's what it is today. Them toasted seeds, we need them all right down in there. Don't let none of them blow away because that is the goodness. We're gonna need us some peppercorn. Shan, how come do they call it peppercorn? I don't know. Is pepper grow like corn on a cob? Maybe. I don't know either, but we're gonna take about that many. A cinnamon stick. I'm gonna go ahead and break it best I can and get it in there so it'll grind a little better. We have all the participants in the swimming pool, so let's get after it. And folks, I just want you to make a powder out of it. So it takes a little effort, but you just keep a grinding. Now remember me telling you about when I was out there at Silver City, New Mexico, when we went down that long alley and went in this little old place that looked like a tin shack, best Mexican food I ever eaten in my life. But I remember the filling they had in there was just cheese and onions, but the, the onions was just cooked after they was in the tortilla. Now, this is where I'm gonna change it up a little, and I'm gonna brown these onions up a little in some butter because I think it's gonna give them a little more flavor. So one large white onion just diced up there pretty good. Put it in that butter in there, and let's just let it get a little browned up and translucent. Keep a stirring it here and there. Won't take long, then we'll set it aside. Well, the onions got translucent, they did, and I took them out of that little Dutch oven and put them over just for safekeeping. Poured that red sauce that you see me blend up and strain right in this Dutch oven, and you can see, folks, that is what we call a true red, red, rich color. That's hard to get out, it is. Two cups condipolo. Shan, who is that? Chicken. Chicken broth. Just pour in there. I want you to mix it all up really well. Just keep a stirring. Folks, folks, we're gonna cook this about 15 to 20 minutes, so till it thickens back up. But don't forget that stuff we done blended up in there. We gotta have it. Make sure it all gets in there. I mean, if you gotta get in there with a paintbrush and get all that stuff, you make sure you got it. But I did have some allspice in the wagon, and folks, it don't take much. I'd say about that much. We'll bring it to a simmer and then let it begin to boil there for a little while. So stick around with me. Well, the assembly blind is running right along. It is, and we're on the go. Now you see me, I done put some avocado oil in that little small Dutch oven and got me some corn tortillas, and we just fried them up. Don't take long, folks, about 30 seconds aside. We don't want them crisp, we just want them pliable. And make sure that you put a little oil back in there every once in a while so you can keep them that way. The sauce is ready. Remember the onions that we browned? We have got some Monterey Jack cheese right here and some of that there queso fresco crumbly cheese. So let's see what happens.
Well, you see me place them in that Dutch oven you did after we got them rolled up. And folks, if you want to do this, preheat your oven to about 300 because you can just slip them right back on a serving dish, slip them in there, and just let them heat for about five to 10 minutes till all that cheesy goodness gets in there. Ain't no need to bake them. That woman out there at Silver City, she just put them all together, brought them to you, dumped the sauce on it, and it was some mighty fine eating it was. But remember, Make sure you got them all laid out there, spread that sauce on. You can put as much or as little as you want. Some of that good queso fresco and some of that crema, some of that table cream. And guess what? Well, first of all, I had good help today, I did. And y'all know they do love some cheese. Now just sit here just a minute and let's talk about this goodness, okay? No, the goodness. Uh, uh. Good boy. Good boy. Y'all have been good help. The cheese was good. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to mash that around there. And I am going to get me a bite of this one right here. Really, I think I got the bite of two of them. Mm. Been a long time since Silver City, New Mexico in 1984. Hang on. <laughs> oh my gosh, folks. It just, there's so much flavor there, you can't hardly describe it. That enchilada sauce has got some, a little dab of heat, but the smoky flavor and the fruitiness that you get out of it, but the allspice and the cinnamon, they sort of come through. But when you saute them onions in some butter and then you mix that back in there with that Monterey and that queso fresco and roll them up and then bake them just a second, it makes you wanna, Woo, Duker! That was some of that good and delicious it was. And true to the form, I mean, thank you, Silver City, and thank you, Miss, I think her name was Juarez. And hey, easy to do. Remember, that recipe is in the link below. You'll find it down there. You can get everything that you need. But folks, I got a little something special I want to share with you today. As Shan pans up there to that flag that you can see on this wagon. Dear Kent and Shannon, we so enjoy the videos and the stories. You two are truly a blessing to us. Your salute to the military touched us from the very first video I watched. Our son was a 19-year-old U.S. Marine killed in action in Marah, Afghanistan on August 20, 2010. He was living his dream and seeing one country as he meant to be. Please accept this flag that was flown over in Cody's honor over the nation's capital in D.C. Much appreciation, Wendy and Randy Childers. Now, folks, I, I don't know about y'all, but uh, that's the reason that I'm going to keep on doing what I do every day, because we owe them so much. I do salute all our service men and women and all the veterans and everybody that's keeping us safe, because it means so much. And let old glory fly, because it is a great thing. Remember, you can gather up all around. Like Jesus said, we love all the little children. We do. Everybody that watches, y'all are our family. Pull up a chair, make yourself at home, and guess what? I'll see you down the cheesy enchilada trail. God bless you each and every one.